So students of the 12th B and C, a few things I'd just like to discuss before I start with the new topic today. Now we've, uh, as I was discussing earlier, we took, had a test of a thing of beauty, right? And uh, the, there's one question that what is the image used to refer to the bounty of uh, nature, the gifts that we receive? Here it is that what are these gifts compared to? It is like abundantly they're falling from heaven. It is like a fountain. So earth there has been compared to a fountain. Which is <coughs> Mighty dead, the word the, in the poem, the thing of beauty. What is the device over there? It is an oxymoron. You have two opposite words there. Mighty, powerful, dead. How can a person who is not here, how can that person be powerful? That is the beauty of nature. That is the grandeur of death. The heroes, the people who have passed away, how they keep on inspiring us even after their death. Right? So the fountain of immortal drink. That is a metaphor. What is it a metaphor? It is a metaphor for the gifts of beauty. Earth has been compared to an eternal fountain, which is there blessing us with so many gifts, right? Okay, so we start with the last chapter of uh, our uh, syllabus from the book Vistas. After that, we'll start with the revision of the chapters that we have previously done. So we have to do indigo, rat trap, our Jennifer's tiger. These things will be revising. We have discussed them before. So we'll be discussing them again, right? Now, today we start with the chapter Even Strides and O Level. This story is about Evans. He's a prisoner and he has uh, attempted to escape from jail previously also. And he wanted, because we have read about how in uh, the prisons, the reforms are there. The prisoners, they're given a chance to change their lives, to become better people, to study if they want to, to learn skills, so that when they go out in the world again, they are able to be useful members of the society so they don't, don't uh, fall back to crime or the wrong deeds that they were doing earlier. And it takes a lot of efforts here. And if you remember when we had your uh, listening and speaking skills, we had also shown you a uh, video about the reforms there, right? In uh, Kiran Bedi's video, we had shown you about the reforms that have happened and how she began the reforms in the jail, right? So here, Evans, he is a prisoner. He has attempted to escape twice, but he has made a strange request that was he wanted to learn German. And nobody could stop because this, these are the, you know, like a prison rules. That if a person wants to study, wants to learn something, yes, fine. But the strange thing was that there was only one person here among all the prisoners who wanted to learn German, and that was Evans. So all the arrangements have been made, and Evans is going to appear for the German exam. So there's one person, one invigilator, right? The person, you know, invigilator is there to make sure that everything goes well. And yes, so here the prison authorities are on alert that a person from outside is coming and Ivans might try something funny. He might try to escape. Now in this chapter, yeah, will Ivans escape? Will he not? Who is it who has the upper hand? Who is the one who is smarter? So when we know when there is, you know, the authorities chasing the criminals, the police, it, it, it seems as if the criminal always has the upper hand because he knows what he's doing. He's prepared in advance. He knows what he is going to do. And the police, you know, like they're not aware that such kind of a crime is going to be committed or something. They can be cautious, but they don't know what the plan of action is. So who is always ahead? It seems as if the criminals are always ahead. Now, in this chapter, we will find out that did even escape from the prison? And if he did, how did he manage it, right? Now, you know, like when the police tries to catch the criminal, sometimes there are very obvious clues. It seems as if the convict or the criminal has left these clues just to distract them. 
So these are called as red herrings. Red herrings, you know, like uh, herring is a kind of fish. Red would be very, very obvious in the water. So our attention will go to that only. So it seems that when a crime is committed or someone has really masterminded something uh, very successfully, so they leave signs or maybe things on, like some kind of evidence to distract. That is the red herring. So here in this chapter, there are going to be certain things. There are a lot of red herrings which are there to make the authorities a little confused. That, so that they really are distracted from the path and distracted from what they really want to do. So I'm sharing the screen here. Please look at it. Let's start with the chapter. Yes, even tries an O level and here who are the main characters. So as we read the play, we are going to come across these characters and let me tell you, it reads like a thriller. You know, it is they're quite interesting. And you're going to enjoy. We're going to really appreciate that how smart this man is. Even he's a criminal and he is there single-handedly. How is he going to deal with the authorities? Is he really going to plan another escape? He has attempted to escape from the jail twice. Is he going to try again? The authorities are on their, you know, wit's end. They're very alert. So who all are they? And of course, here, before we start, should criminals in prison be given the opportunity of learning and education? As I've discussed, yes, the criminals definitely need to be given an opportunity to learn, to get education, because if we want them to be useful members of the society, it is very important that they have some kind of an education they have some kind of training, so they don't fall back to their criminal ways again. So under the reforms which have taken place in the prisons, yes, so the criminals are given chance to you know, improve themselves, to become better people. Now, yes, we have the secretary of the examinations board. The exam is going to take place. O level is equivalent to our 10th class exam. O level is equivalent to the, you know, like your metric examination, your class 10th exam, right? So we have the secretary of the examination board. So board is there, he's going to make the paper, question paper, then the governor of HM prison. So the governor, he is the head of the prison, Oxford prison here, HM prison, Oxford. James Evans is the prisoner. So this is the person who, who the story revolves around. James Evans, the governor, he's in charge. He's going to make all efforts. He's very alert. Nothing, you know, unfortunate should happen. Mr. Jackson, Mr. Stevens, they are prison officers. The Reverend S. McCleary is an invigilator. So yes, someone has got to come and see that the exam goes in smoothly and someone has to be there to hand over the question paper, the answer sheets, you know what invigilators do. So McCleary is an invigilator. Mr. Carter is a detective and Mr. Bell is also a detective, right? Now, this is, these are the characters and we will you know, like learn about them as we read the story. What is the setting of the story? Evans is going to give his O-level exam. What is an O-level exam? An O-level exam is the equivalent of the matric level exam, right? And he is going to appear for the exam of the German language, right? Is it clear? Yes. Now, all precautions have been taken to see to it that the O-level German examination arranged in the prison for Evans does not provide him with any means of escape. He is going to meet someone from outside. He might try something, you know, scary. He might try to hurt that person. So all precautions have been taken that yes, nothing should happen. Nothing should go wrong. Now look at this here, let's start. It was in early March when the secretary of the examinations board received the call from Oxford prison. Who is the examination board? 
Why? Because Evans wanted to give the exam of German language, right? And from the prison, they got the call. It's a slightly unusual request, Governor, but I don't see why we shouldn't try to help. Just the one fellow, you say? So, right, it's an unusual request and there is only one person. And so we can't move that person out of the prison. He has to be there. These are rules. So we'll have to make arrangements for one person. Like right? they say, in one examination center, there's only one student appearing. Isn't it? So this is the scenario over there. But all the arrangements have to be made. You need the question paper. You need the invigilator. You need seating arrangement. Isn't it? All these arrangements would be there. That's it. Chap called Evans started nine classes O-level German last September, says he's dead keen to get some sort of academic qualification, right? So he's saying that this person, he started his classes last uh, year and he really wants to learn in German. He's saying, I want to get some kind of academic qualification. No, and the prison authorities cannot say no to that person. These are rules under the reforms, under all, yes. So the prisoners are given a chance to improve their qualifications. Is he any good? He was the only one in the class. So you can say he's had individual tuition all the time. Really would have cost him a packet if he'd been outside. So he's doing it for free. The authorities are paying for it. And see what was the teaching arrangement like? There was one person, one teacher. So it was like individual tuition he's getting. Well, let's give him a chance, shall we? That's jolly kind of you. What's exactly the procedure now? Oh, don't worry about that. I'll be sending you all the forms and stuff. What's his name, you say, Evans? James Roderick Evans. It sounded rather grand, a big name. Just one thing, Governor, he's not a violent sort of fellow, is he? I don't know, want to know his criminal record or anything like that. See, the examination board secretary, he's really a little worried that uh, because I have to send an invigilator in the prison, is he a violent person? What kind of a criminal record does he have? No, there's no record of violence. Quite a pleasant sort of chap, they tell me. Bit of a card, really. One of the stars at the Christmas concert. Imitations, you know, the sort of thing. Mike Yawood stuff. No, he's just a congenital kleptomaniac. All of you, please underline this word in your book. Who's a kleptomaniac? A person who cannot control himself from stealing things. That person is not necessarily a criminal, right? So some people, they just have a habit. It is a defect, you can say it's a disorder. They cannot control their, themselves. They just have to steal something. And the problem with Evans is he is a congenital kleptomaniac. Right? So he cannot control himself. A kleptomaniac, a person who has to steal, who cannot control himself from stealing. The governor was tempted to add something else, but he thought better of it. He'd look after that particular side of things himself. So the governor wanted to tell him that, yeah, he's just tried to escape twice also, but he didn't want to scare him. Okay? Right? Presumably, said the secretary, you can arrange a room where, no problem, he's in a cell of his own. If you have no objections, he can sit in the exam in there. So the secretary is saying, we'd want a separate room. I don't want to expose my invigilator to so many criminals. He says, don't worry, he is alone. He has one cell to himself. What is cell? Cell is a prison. Right? Cell is an, another word for prison. No problem. He's in a cell on his own. If you've no objections, he can sit in the exam in there. That's fine. And we could easily get one of the persons from St. Mary Mags to invigilate if that's fine. Yes, they seem to have a lot of parsons there, don't they? 
The two men chuckled good naturedly, and the secretary had a final thought. At least there's one thing. You shouldn't have much trouble keeping him incommunicado, should you? The governor chuckled politely once more, reiterated his thanks, and slowly cradled the phone. Evans. Okay, now what is the story about? Can you tell me? Anybody? Have you realized what it is about? So there's a conversation happening between the governor and the secretary of the examination board. What are they discussing? Who's going to take the exam? Even is going to take the exam. Which subject exam is he going to take? German language, right? And so the secretary who is there and he wants to, you know, like make sure that uh, what are the arrangements? So both of them are concerned. They have to make arrangements that there is no kind of violence. There is no kind of attempt of events to escape. Both are worried. The governor is worried that events will try to escape. The secretary is worried that he's a prisoner and my person is going to come over there, the vigilator. What if he comes to some harm? Okay, so what are the conditions? Yes, he wants that there should be a separate room for him where the exam would be conducted. So he's saying, yes, we're going to give a cell for him. He's, he has a, a, a single cell for him. The exam would be there, right? So then they decide that there is a church nearby. From there, one parson can come, a priest can come. And the uh, most of these priests, like uh, they don't communicate much and they don't talk much. So even if Evans wanted to talk, he would not have uh, someone to talk to, right? Of natural it's exam, the vigilator is going to keep quiet. He's not a very talkative person. Is this clear? Yes. Can you just uh, quickly tell me now? As we discuss this uh, story, right? Uh, yeah. I will be, you know, giving you this would be a sequence of events that you have to remember. It's a lengthy chapter, but you make a flow chart. If we do it that way, what happens when, what happens next that way, then it becomes very easy to remember. Okay. So what, are, what is the scenario that, uh, yes, the governor of the prison, he's worried that nothing should go wrong. He wants to make sure that all the security arrangements are in place. Okay, right, so this is the setting of the story. Let's have a look again now. Let's just uh, read a little more. Even the break, as the prison officers called him, thrice he had escaped from prison, and but for the recent wave of unrest in the maximum security establishments up north, he wouldn't now be gracing the governor's premises in Oxford. And the governor was going to make absolutely certain that he wouldn't be disgracing them. So, of course, so it's not twice that he has, it's thrice, right? So, three times Evans, and he was nicknamed as Evans the Break. Why was Evans in jail? He was a kleptomaniac, right? So, he was coming to prison again and again. And uh, the number of times he had come, he had always tried to escape. So everyone is on toes. Everyone is worried that Evans is going to try to escape again. Okay, right. Thrice he had escaped from prison. And but for the recent wave of unrest in the maximum security establishments up north, he would not now be gracing the governor's premises in Oxford. And the governor was going to make absolutely certain that he would not be disgracing them. So he's saying that, no, he, nothing is going to happen like this, right? Not that Evans was a real burden, just a persistent nagging presence. He'd be all right in Oxford, though. The governor would see to that, would see to it personally. So he's going to send him to that prison, right? He would be... The governor would see to that, would see to it personally. And besides, it was just a possibility that Evans was genuinely interested in O-level German. Just a slight possibility, just a very slight possibility. They know that, no, he's not doing this exam because he wants to learn. What is the reason that he wants to do this? And the governor is a little worried 
that yeah, maybe 1% chances are there that he really wants to learn a language, but he thinks that he's taking this as an opportunity to escape. And he says, if he tries that, then he will be going to another prison where there is more security, right? So where he would never try to escape. At 8.30 p.m. on Monday, 7 June, Evans' German teacher shook him by the hand in the heavily guarded recreational block just across from D wing. So now his teacher, who was there taking his tuitions or giving him uh, teaching about the German language, shook his hand and wished him luck. And when you are learning a language, you do expect to learn at least some basic words. Guten Glück, Herr Evans. Pardon? I said, good luck. Good luck for tomorrow. Oh, thanks. I mean, thanks, Sean. You haven't a cat in hell's chance of getting through, of course, but so even the teacher is saying, see, you don't understand these words only. You don't know I'm saying good luck. So what do you know about the German language? What exam are you going to write? I may surprise everybody, said Ivan. So you might think I don't know anything, but I might do very well in the exam. At 8.30 the following morning, Evans had a visitor, two visitors, in fact. He tucked his grubby string vest into his equally grubby trousers and stood up from his bunk, smiling cheerfully. Morning, Mr. Jackson. This is indeed an honor. So the prison officers have come. They've come to inspect his cell. They've come to make arrangements, right? So they're worried that nothing should go wrong. Okay. 